In this video I want to talk about underappreciated, underexplored and for many unknown aspect of megalithic research and investigation. This involves the potential of more megaliths than we currently realize having possibly been once made of wood and then this wood either being accidentally or more likely purposely mineralized by placing it in specific areas such as certain waterfalls where water has a high mineral content and mineralizes or petrifies of a piece of wood. Now I've been suspicious of this for a long time. About 20 years ago I had stumbled upon a large standing stone in a place called Carachonasa Bay on the very north coast of County Mayo. Next to a remote beach is a large standing stone about 15 feet tall and very narrow. It looks like a badly weathered railroad or railway sleeper or tie as they call them in America. That the rain has eaten away into the surface and left the grooves or the rings in the wood exposed. But it's clearly made of stone. It's obviously a stone structure. And it seemed to me that what I was looking at was a mineralized piece of wood. And I never thought much more of that. I just assumed it was the way the natural elements on the northwest coast of Ireland had weathered this particular stone at Carachanasa Bay. A little later, I was up in the Carrow Keel chambers on the top of the mountains in County Sligo. And while crawling in on the floor, I was dusting away some pebbles so they wouldn't stick into my kneecaps. They're often dragged in by people crawling into the chambers accidentally. As their feet come in, they will drag in the pebbles. So I dust them out away. And as I was running my hand across the base of the chamber, it was apparent to me I was looking at a piece of petrified wood. In fact, I was with James Swaggart at the time, and I pointed this out to him. And he says, that absolutely does look like a piece of petrified wood. Eventually, these casual suspicions I had, all came into focus while I was watching the wonderful documentary Standing with Stones. And in there they showed an upright post, it was the Nothostat, that appeared to be stone, very circular, very round, holding up the roof inside the Bryn Calais Dewey chambered passage in Anglesey in North Wales. My Welsh friends, I hope you forgive me for the pronunciation. Welsh, although it's a Celtic language, is very different than Gaelic and Irish. The Standing with Stones team pointed out that it was probably a pole that was placed there in Victorian times. And mineralization caused the wooden pole to petrify. And now the assumption today is that we're looking at a pole-like stone that was put in there to prop up the roof in ancient times. When in reality it might only be 100 or 150 years old. And mineralization inside the chamber turned it to stone. Having gone to myself a few years ago, again, having close examination, I did determine that, yes, this is a petrified wooden pole. And as the Standing with Stones people quite rightly in the documentary pointed out, all the years of archaeologists who come to these sites, and they miss the obvious standing in front of them. Now, naturally, this opens a whole kettle of fish. While we know for a fact that most of the large stones that quarries all over the world did provide the stones for the great megalithic structures, we see this at the unfinished carved obelisks in ancient Egypt, the unfinished large stones at Baalbek in the Lebanon. We know the stones of Stonehenge came from this site in Wales. And, of course, the famous Easter Island statues are clearly shown here. In the process of being quarried. I'm not talking about all megalithic stones. I'm talking about specific ones that may demonstrate mineralization that was deliberately done on purpose and somehow in a very primitive Neolithic or Bronze Age form of alchemy turned them literally to stone. Now there's lots of logistical advantages in this. You could put a large piece of wood under, say, a waterfall, and have it become petrified through mineralization. But before it's been turned completely to stone, you can transport it back to the site, and it would still be significantly lighter than if it was fully stone. As the mineralization process 
begins on the exterior surface of the object and makes its way into the interior, it's quite plausible that they could have taken this object that was stone on the outside and still wood on the inside, placed it up in a field, and have the mineralization process continue while it's standing upright in its megalithic location. Now we see this at Mother Shipton's well in England, where to this day people continue to put objects and mementos on the well, which in no time turn to stone. This is a very quick process, far quicker than generally thought. Look at this ladder in France, for example. It's less than a hundred years old, but the rungs on the ladder have completely turned to stone from mineralization. Clearly we know that our ancient ancestors discovered this process somehow, and it does beg the question as to how many megaliths actually were made of wood to begin with, and then purposely mineralized and petrified. This especially comes into focus when you think about complex carvings and designs within megalithic stones. It would be much easier to carve them into wood blocks, place them in an area where they would become mineralized, such as a mother shipton type waterfall, and then the patronation and the designs would also be mineralized. Taking this one step further, there's nothing to stop, say, the body of a great elder, a chieftain, or a leader of a community in Neolithic or Bronze Age times, having their bodies placed inside a tree trunk, the tree trunk placed in an area of mineralization, and then it becoming a standing stone would literally the body of the king or the chieftain or the leader of the community, a great witch or seer, inside the stone. It does make you wonder about Long Meg in England. Is there literally a Long Meg in there? The famous two-faced statue at Boa Island in County Fermanagh in Ireland was this originally carved from wood and placed in an area where mineralization would be undertaken. One could only imagine the magical feeling and supernaturalism and how the process of watching something made of wood, cloth, or maybe even an entire human being inside a tree trunk turn to stone. Again, this is not to say all megalithic structures were originally made of wood, but certainly in the case of Bryn Calais Dewey and my suspicions of the Karachunasa standing stone, they're absolutely made from petrified wood. How many of the megaliths we are looking at, particularly in wet, damp climates around the world, started out as trees? And when you think of the Woodhenge location in England, very close to Stonehenge, and the Aubrey Holes, where the original wooden megaliths in some particular areas, rather than decaying and rotting away, ended up becoming the standing stones we see now.